ISO FileMaker Magazine, the professional's resource for FileMaker know-how. Hey there, this is Matt Petrowski from ISO FileMaker Magazine, and in this video, we're going to be taking a look at learning something new about FileMaker. In this video, we're talking about database discovery. How can you basically discover whatever you want about your database? It's a tool from Geist Interactive called FM Perception. Let's take a look. All right, thanks for joining me on my desktop. It is my intention to go through this tool and show you not everything because it's not possible, but show you the cool things about this tool. Now I use this myself sporadically, mostly because I do a lot of database development where I know everything about what's going on in the database. But if you are using a database that you are unfamiliar with or someone else has designed, in, uh, indispensable, <laughs> invincible is what I almost said, but indispensable is what this tool is. So here we have the splash screen. We've got a really nice logo right here. Um, the eye into your database. So without spending too much time on what's going on, I'm just going to give you an overview of the four key areas up here. Oops, don't want that. Let's go ahead and delete that and I'll hold down my shift key while I actually draw my box. This area, the top area is going to be our discovery area where we drill down into different areas. Moving on from that, the side area is going to be our details or our information area. And then down at the bottom, we basically have a list or the, I wouldn't call this the details, I would call this the topics or the list of things related to whatever you select in this top area up here. So. Having discussed that, what we can do is take a look at the process of breaking down a database. Now, I have not worked with this database before. I've worked with the database, but I haven't discovered the data in this database or the schema, the details, etc. But that's what we're going to be doing right now. All right, so I've opened up the database. What we are taking a look at is this is called Carafe Kitchen. And this is a FileMaker file that has a collection of various JavaScript libraries that you can integrate into a FileMaker solution. Now, we're not going through this particular database, but we are going to discover what's going on with this database. I did not design it. I have high respect for the person who did, Jeremiah Small over at Saliant. And what I'm going to do is show you how you can go through and use what we have, FM Perception, and take a look at all of the guts of a particular database. Now, this is a great way to discover what's going on with any FileMaker file. One, if you're completely unfamiliar, and then two, even if you are familiar, being able to rediscover what's going on. And if you hang on through this video, I will show you a really awesome trick to be able to rip guts out of a particular database feature by feature and be able to paste that into another solution, such as being able to do a performance review using FM Perception and then following that on by simply doing a migration if you want to start a new file. So let's start with how do you get the database intelligence out of a FileMaker file? Well, quite simply, there is a menu in FileMaker 19, this menu right here, Tools, may not be available. You may need to enable this, and let's take a look at where we're going to do that. Here in FileMaker Pro on the Macintosh, we are going to go to our Preferences right here. As soon as Preferences comes up, if you have not selected it or turned it on, this is the option that you want to use. Use Advanced Tools. Once you turn that on in later versions of FileMaker, then this is the menu that you're going to have available right here, this tools menu. Now, when we select this tools menu in FileMaker 19 and higher, you're going to see this option right here, save a copy as XML. Now, as of the recording of this video, we need to be aware that there are two different XML outputs that FileMaker will output. And FM Perception, as I'm recording this video, is working with the first of the two. The one that I currently have highlighted is the second one that's the newer version. And I believe FM Perception will support it at some point. But for right now, this save a copy of the database as XML is not what we want. We want this one right here, the database design report. Now yours probably won't have a keyboard shortcut set. I do have mine set so that I'd be able to uh, output these really quickly. It is helpful if you want to. This is something by setting this key right here. I've done that in the Macintosh operating system and on Windows you have shortcuts you can use as well. So by selecting this, what's going to happen is a dialog will come up. We'll bring that onto screen. It will list however many files you have open. You want to check however many files you want to output that data from. 
I want to choose down at the bottom here between these two options. I want to choose the XML option and I do not want the HTML. I don't need to look at this in a web page or in a browser. I want to use the XML, which is what our FM perception is going to use to process. I'm going to turn off this option or the checkbox right here to automatically open it because I do not need to open XML. It will look like a bunch of gobbledygook. So backing off now, we will click create. Uh, it's always a good idea to create a folder, especially if you're going to do be doing this routinely. And it's a good idea to do this on a routine basis as a solution develops or as you take things apart because multiple variations you will see allow you to then further on use a different tool called a diffing tool, which we'll cover in another video. But for right now, I'm going to create a folder and I'm just going to call this something like whatever the solution is. I'll call it carafe. XML. I'll create that. And this is where I'm going to save this. Now we don't want to rename this necessarily. Um, I've never had a situation where I need to rename this something other than summary. What it will do is it will output two different files as we will see. I'll click save. And when we go to open that in the FM perception application, we're going to see that those two files, we want to select the summary, the one that we just output. If we had renamed it, we would have to select that file, but you will have one XML file for each individual file that you have exported. Typically it's going to be a single file solution, but if you're using the um, data separation model where you have a user interface file and a data file separate, then you'll have two files. When I click on the command O or open and we go to my desktop and we go to carafe, we can see those are, there are the two files that I was just talking about. Summary is the name that it gave it automatically, which we did not need to rename. And then there is the actual XML. Now we can always see that this is the case because when we scroll over, we can see that this is the larger of the two. This is just a what they would call a summary file, I guess, that summary fits. It is summarizing all of the other files, where they are, and giving metadata information about them. Now, this file size, this is extremely small, and I'm doing this on purpose because we can look at things real time here on this particular solution. Now, what's important to know as I select the summary and we get ready to process it is this, and it processes lightning fast. Lightning fast because FM Perception, and there's two other tools that are on the market. It is Base Elements and then Inspector Pro from Beeswax. Those two solutions do a full post process, meaning you output the XML, they ingest the XML, and then process the whole file and put it all into one FileMaker database. Where FM Perception is a little bit different is it only processes things as you want to view them. So what we have here is this XML file, and I'm going to hide FileMaker in the background here because we're going to be able to basically discover everything in this file that we might want to find out about it using this one tool. So let's go ahead and take break this down and go uh, piece by piece. All right, so the first thing we want to know is that this drill down hierarchy up at the top allows us to select the file, which I've done right now, and then we have a long list of all of the different things that we could potentially be interested in. Now, one thing I will say about this particular tool, as I scroll through and we just see all of the different options, you can pause the video, read them on your own. I'll go be going through some of them, but definitely not all of them. Now, the utility of FM Perception is that it can be used for all kinds of different things. You can use it for the purpose of discovery and being able to find out where things are broken, um, how things are connected. You can also use it from an archiving standpoint where you've archived a particular feature, then ripped it out of a particular database, but figured out you need to go back and get some of those pieces and put them back in. We'll see that coming up here. Let's go through some of the things that I might want to discover on this solution and go through how I would use the tool. Now, remember, as you're watching me use this tool, there are many other ways to use this tool and there are, its feature set is so comprehensive that I don't know if there's any one person other than the developer who knows pretty much everything that this tool can do. So first off, we'll select on tables. Now we can look at all of these tables and this gives me sort of a general idea, but where the most information comes from is down in the list part, down in the bottom down here. Now what we're going to see is it's very important to pay attention 
that this scroll bar goes pretty long on a lot of different uh, areas of the whole of this tool. And uh, I think fields or scripts, it goes super, super long. Now, the biggest advantage to this tool is that if you want the information, the information is there. And it's pretty much in these columns. Now, you are able to drag these columns to put them in a uh, an order that makes it easiest to discover whatever it is that you're looking at and you can't forget the fact that, hey, I've got to scroll over and see if there's any other fields that will help me out. And we'll take a look at that as we go through this solution. So right off the bat, because all of these columns can be sorted, I can immediately come down and say, I want to sort by fields. Okay, I've already got some insight. Carafe bundle as a table is the one that has the most fields. But what's the order in which the developer who created this file sort of created everything. Well, this FMP ID is an internal ID that's assigned to tables as they are created. If I sort based on that in an ascending order, I can say, hmm, it looks like the carafe bundle was created first, then he created a globals table, then he created a base elements install, meaning he's accounting for the plugin that they're using. And basically I get, I start to get some insight into how this database evolved, how it was developed. And if you're a good FileMaker developer, being able to follow that evolution helps you with understanding a solution. When I sort by fields, I can look at, okay, this is the heaviest and probably the most utilized table. And we can do that for layouts. We can do that for scripts, including their script steps and all kinds of different things. We can also get a sense as we scroll over here to look at the table occurrence names, etc. But remember, we always have the area over here to the side where we have the details. So when I select on this particular globals right here, well, let's go by fields again. When I select right here, remember we're going to be able to get more information. Now, the utility of this tool is such that we can resize this as needed. So let me give you a really good tip with regards to utilizing this tool in terms of how you use it with regards to your monitors. All right, so how can you most effectively use this tool? Well, I'll show you how I personally use it. Notice that I am log I'm in my uh, preferences pane here on the Macintosh and I've clicked here and I've gone to the displays area right here down at the bottom. I'm selecting on that and going to the arrange. Now I, tip I personally work with three monitors and uh, it was a little while back that I started working with a monitor in the vertical orientation that we have right here. So this is my primary screen that I'm typically working on right in the middle here. And then off to the side is what I consider my documentation and information screen. Now what I'm going to show you now as I close that is a tool that I use on the Macintosh and on Windows I believe it's a built-in feature. But notice that as I drag this to the edge of the screen, I'm going to get a little display right there and then it's going to pop. I can also just drag this and drag it straight up to the top of the this monitor and it will simply expand out to the full width of this screen. Now this is what I do when I drag it to my information monitor and I have it sitting right there and I'm able to use this. So let's take a look at a typical scenario. I would drag this if I was doing development on a single machine. We'll switch over to FileMaker. And then I might take my database and have it off to the side right here. And if I'm working in the scripts, I'll have the script space off to the side right here because I want to be able to see my information and then switch back over to FileMaker in order to do some digging depending on how I'm using the tool. If I'm using it to refactor a particular feature or dig things out of the database, I of course need the database active. Now, because of those multiple monitors, having all of this on a dedicated monitor really makes it helpful. But with things in a large vertical space, you can drag things around in order to see more or less of whatever area it is that you're working on. So let's come up with a hypothetical situation, because in reality, I cannot go through all of the different areas that they have right here. Fields flat. It gives you a sense of how many fields there are. You want to see how many fields there are in total? Well, that's what fields flat is going to show you. I'm going to need to drag this over here. I'm going to drag the whole thing. and We'll just resize the information because I don't want to see a whole lot of that. You can see here again, I've got that large scroll. I can see how many fields are global right here. This is basically showing me all of the fields in the whole of the solution. 
and I can see how many of them are used by a particular table by, let's say, finding out a particular table. How many of them have validation? How many of them have auto enter values? What are those auto auto enter values? All of these are probably all primary keys. And there they are. Those are all primary keys or a, a primary key of a different table. Now this is a very small solution, but I think you're starting to get the idea of how much information you can dig out of this. So let's take a look at another solution because I'm not going to, going to go into every single feature like I mentioned. That would make this video just way too long and Geist has a lot of videos that you can use in order to see all of the individual ways that you can use this tool. Layouts and folders. We look at these in terms of how the folders are organized or we can see layouts flat. And this, do, this is the same for scripts. So in our layouts dialog, we can use our folders, and if you want to see them in that order, we can definitely see them. Just like with scripts, we've got our scripts and our groups, and here I can drill down. There's only one main folder in this solution. In that main folder is a folder called Carafe. In that folder is private and public. You're going to have a lot more folders probably in your solution. This is a very small, streamlined solution. But if I go into scripts flat, what's really nice about that and we'll just go ahead and zoom this window down, is again, if I want to see anything in a particular order, all I have to do is find the column that's going to allow me to see what I want to see, how I want to see it, and sort it in that order. Do I want to see how the scripts were actually created? Well, in this order, I can see that because of the FMP ID, if you know that FileMaker is assigning a number sequentially, and that number is never reused, I can see that scripts one, two, and three were actually erased, and the fourth script is just currently a placeholder or a divider script. Then we have the readme, which was 58. So what that means is in this solution, Jeremiah actually had a lot of scripts that got replaced before we're actually seeing one of the first used scripts at script 58, meaning 57 and down, other than script number four, the fourth script ever created, was actually discarded, and that is the evolution of this file. So knowing these things, they sort of help out in a lot of places, but where are the most helpful features in this database or in this particular tool? Well, let's take a look at that right now. All right, so I mentioned the most useful, and that's arguably possibly not true. Um, most useful really depends on how you're using this tool. If you really only need it to dig into a certain particular feature, such as discovering how many places a particular script is called, you're able to just go into the scripts, right? You're into scripts flat, and you can search for the script that you want. Let's put in replace. We say we want this script right here, and then we're able to drill down in this script. And there's two ways you could do this. You can click on the script with the list here or anything that's listed down in the bottom here, you can simply double click. So when I double click, you can see that the top hierarchy view will adjust and it will now select that script. And now I can go through and find all of the different places where that script is called and all of the subscripts that that script calls. So we can see right here, we've got those. How many steps does it has? Well, it's got 69 elements. We can see those here, or we can see them when we have this selected. If we select the script within the details, we can see all of the steps right here. There you go, 69 steps, which was listed. Or if we select on this and we double click and we select on the steps, we can also see the exact same information here in the bottom list view. And you can see again, 69 steps. So you can see the same information in multiple different places. It's a matter of coming up with what's comfortable to you. But that is where we are drilling down into the information after you have found out some discovery and looking at those most useful areas. So those are probably what I would consider down at the bottom. Now, these areas, as I slide this out, notice that they all say slow, 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 slow. Well, it's not going to be slow on my machine here because I'm working with a very lightweight file that's only 5.8 megabytes. If you have a massive FileMaker database, it will be slow and it will say, take some time. And you have to do that each time that you open the XML. It's not saved like the other tools. 
but you can export it. You are able to, using a menu option up here, choose these options to export results to CSV or export results as HTML content, which is pretty nice. But let's take a look at these most important or these most critical features if you're trying to do some discovery where you can clean things up in your database. You can use these unreferenced objects, indirection sources, broken references, calculations, layout objects, and the report card in order to find out details. Now notice that from the time that I clicked on that, there was a little bit of a delay there. If I wasn't working with a 5.8 megabyte file and I was working with a one gigabyte file, you better believe that this report card is going to take a long time. So when and how you use this feature, you're going to have to basically discern when it's best. But the report card is going to provide you a high level view. We'll scroll that up again out of the way. Doing this is really important in this tool is ad constantly adjusting the views to see what you need to see, get things out of the way. In fact, I wish you could double click on this center thing and it would just shut that down and then I could always drag it open. But if we look at this, this is where we get a top down view of how this database has been put together. It tells us uh, some stats as best as it can, um, averages, uh, external database sources. If you're going out using MySQL or uh, another external SQL source, it will tell you general field counts, serialized fields, global fields, container, index, calculated. Here we can see it's giving us a percentage. There's only one unstored field. If this, and I didn't mean to click that, which took me there. Let's go to the report card again. Um, if you do click on these, it will drill down into these sub areas as we just saw. But if this in uh, this unstored calculated fields, if this is a really high percentage, you will have a slow FileMaker solution. If you have a lot of summary fields, you'll know that you have a slow solution. All of this database intelligence that this report card gives us, plus all of the other areas, lets us know what are we getting into when we're working with a database that we haven't previously opened. And that's what I love about this tool. So you can investigate this report card and you can go and use some of these other features that are here. If I want to find out how many broken references there are in this file, I can take a look at them. Now again, the hierarchy here is a mirror of what we have down in the bottom list. It just depends on how you want to drill down through this. We also have this very important back arrow right here. Whatever you go into or drill into, you can simply go back to what you were previously looking at. So in this case, my previous view was this hierarchy view or basically selecting the main file. Because I had gone to one of the main features or the main areas, broken references, I was able to drill into that and it just took me back up to the file. But we can see in this list again, I can sort. Okay, the rest of these zeros I don't really care about because there are no file missing, function missing, etc. But I can see there are some missing field references in this file. Might want to clean those up, Jeremiah. And I can see where they are. They are just two different script steps right here. I can look at them. I can see that the content, we've got a field missing right there, and I can go in and fix those up. So this tool can be used to clean up your file or do all kinds of other things. And one of my most favorite features is what we're going to talk about right now. All right, so let's go into one of my most favorite features about this particular tool. And again, there's so much going on that I just can't go through it all. In fact, if you are interested or you have information about how this tool is best used, leave a comment down below or on the website so that others can experience this tool. I'll provide links to the videos provided by Geist. And of course, there's just so many ways that you could use this tool. But what's my most favorite feature? It is this. You can completely yank out a particular feature and put it into another file. So I'm going to go over to FileMaker. I'm going to create a new file. I'll create a new blank file that we'll have right here. We'll create that on my desktop. Actually, we'll go ahead and create it right here in this folder that I created for the Carafe. XML. We'll save that file and I will say, okay, I'm not going to add any fields at this time. So let's say I want to replicate or rip out a feature from a particular database. 
Now, regardless if the database has already been updated or you don't even have access to the database anymore, maybe this was a consulting project where you basically took on a database, you remember a really cool feature from it, and provided it's okay for you to take that feature uh, if the code isn't copyrighted and there isn't private data or what have you, any type of XML output that you have saved, you can copy and put it into another FileMaker database. Let's take a look at this. So over here in Carafe, I've got this button right here down at the bottom, this import button. Everything starts with a, a click in the user interface. I want to see and find out all of the elements that are used or tied to that particular button. Now I could do that in FileMaker, but I can also do that in FM Perception by simply dissecting everything out. So over here, how do I find that button? Well, that button is on a layout. So I go to layouts flat. What's the layout? In this particular case, I do have the database. I can see that the layout is Carafe Bundles. So I will simply select Carafe Bundles, which I've done right there. So with that selected, I'm able to select this option of layout objects. So this is going to give me a list of all of the objects on that list. Now, the great thing about FM Perception is that anything, literally anything can be searched. In fact, down here at the bottom, there is this one area right off of the main file that we have right here called text search, where you can literally search across the XML any and everything that you want. But if you're in a specific area, that search works the same as well. So here in the layout objects for the craft bundles, I know that there's an import button. I know that that word import is on the button. So all I have to do is go to the search feature right here and type in import. It will say right there, there's a button and the label is import right there. I am now able to drill down and find every single aspect from this button out into FileMaker and I can copy all of it from FM Perception. Let's take a look at this. So first off, I can double click this button and when I double click this button, I'm going to see this feature right here where I get a list of the layout higher object the layout object hierarchy and sub elements. So sub elements selecting on that is going to show me the script that is attached to that button. Drilling down into that, I can say within this script, what are the steps in that script? How many other scripts call this script or how many scripts does this script call? How many times is this script called by other scripts? So with just these two options, I can see this button or this, yeah, the button, which has this script attached, this script is not called by any other scripts in the whole solution, but I can see that it has four other scripts. All right, we're getting pretty deep now. So I need to know how many tables, how many fields, how many custom functions, how many layouts might be referenced. Well, right here, we can see all elements referenced. So I can see this field, this field, this summary field, these four scripts, and this one layout. But that might not be all. But watch how easy it is to start the reconstruction process. With all of these elements selected, which if I am drilled down here, if I want to go back in the hierarchy, I simply select this. All of these items, as they are displayed right here, can be copied and pasted into FileMaker. I love this. So if I want this field, this field and this field, I of course can see what their location is by looking at one of the columns. I can see that there's a Carafe bundle and a Carafe globals. So if I wanted to rip this feature out of this solution, start to put it into my brand new solution, I know that I'm going to need at least these two tables. Well, I can go over to the tables by going back in the hierarchy, going to the tables and actually grabbing them out. I can, I mean, literally, this solution even lets me stay here with everything that I have on screen and simply create a new tab. So notice right here that I can go up to the view menu and use show tab bar and show all tabs. If I show the tab bar, I can actually create a new tab. Or if I use the command key of, I believe it's command shift and backslash, I can create a new tab. I can open this again, the exact same summary, and I can flip between them without losing my place. So I can keep my place in this file, 
which is the same file in this other tab, and just go over to my tables and start to break things down. So if I want the craft bundle and the craft globals right here, notice that I can right click and say copy for FileMaker. So I could copy these tables, but if I copy the tables, it's inclusive of all 49 fields on the bundle and all 16 fields. If I want just this one feature, then of course I'm just going to copy just those fields. So let's see if this actually works. Here I have three fields selected. If I only needed one, I would select the one. I select this field and this field by holding down the command key or control key. I right click, I choose copy for FileMaker. I go over to my new solution. I go into the solution, I'm in the manage fields and I hit command V. There are my three fields. Now remember, it won't work, it's not magic. You have to understand the order in which things need to be copied. You have to take a look at the objects themselves. So if I want to know this bundle field, I'm going to have to select it, go over and look at my details and determine if this is a calculated field, does it reference a custom function? Does it reference another field? So any references have to be in the database already. If there's a custom function that's referenced, I would have to go to the custom function and copy that. But I can copy it right here from this particular tool. I don't have to go over into FileMaker. We'll cancel out of that. Actually, uh, let's cancel that. Let's say, okay, we're keeping our features, but I don't have to go into FileMaker, go into the custom functions, go to that custom function copy. I can copy it right from the tool, which is absolutely awesome. So if I wanted to copy all of these scripts, I can select all of them right there and just copy for FileMaker and rip this feature out. Now this is how I love to program. I program in a way such that I try to isolate my features so that they are highly modular so that I can do this exact thing. And so if I'm going to do this process, such as take a particular feature out of a database, when I do that, I'm going to try to decouple things as much as possible and that's what this tool helps me to do when I'm refactoring or working on someone else's database. All right, so the final thing that I'm going to go through are just some tips about using the interface. I've already showed you how you can drag things around. I've given you the, the suggestion about using a dedicated info monitor. If you can stick a monitor and use it in the vertical orientation, it's really helpful. One of the last tips that I'm going to leave you with is sometimes this view can get, a, it's really a lot of information. It can become information overload and sometimes you need to size things out. Work with your columns the way that you need them to be ordered. If you need a particular column, move that column over and then rearrange it. What's really nice about the tool is it preserves all of those settings on that file, I believe as long as you're working with the file. And case in point, if I go over to fields, and I search for uh, bundle ID, and that filters this particular list out, and then I go over to the script steps flat, and then I go back to the fields, you'll notice that it retained the fact that I had searched for that particular area. Also, don't forget, you've got this little option right here where it can limit the searching specifically to the name of the element within the database, everything, or the FileMaker internal ID. So if you're used to working with the internal IDs, really pretty helpful. But arrange those columns, simply drag them around. If you're dealing with everything that is uh, has a validation, drag that validation right to the front of your list. Put it in front of the field name if you need it. If you want the field name in first and you want to see the icon, just rearrange things and size things out. There's also this nice little tip that with the scrolling area in this hierarchy down here, sometimes you need to just get everything sized out and it's not that it's not obvious that if I want all of these to be sized out if you hold down the option key which is probably going to be the shift key on Windows when you, what you, whatever you do to one will work on all of them so notice that all of them are getting big right now and I can make them all pretty big which is really nice when you've got uh, another monitor especially if it's in the horizontal orientation but I can always individually do them, but that option key will apply to all of the different areas. And remember, of course, if there's something that you want here in this solution, scripts, it's not just being able to, let's go to scripts flat, 
and we'll go to a script right here that maybe has some code. There we go. It's not just being able to select in this script and then being able to right click and uh, in the scripts, right click here and choose copy for FileMaker. You can also copy code that you have in other things as well, so or in uh, calculations. So with this selected right here, I of course can go into this and if this is the code that I want, I can simply select it. It's just text, copy that and go use it. That probably goes without saying, but I thought I should mention it. So these are just a few of my wrap up tips. And again, as I've stated it over and over, there's so much going on in this tool and so many different ways that you can use it that you just have to continue to explore, watch the videos and see what can be done because it is just that powerful of a tool. So before we wrap up, let's take a look at the pricing. And what I have for you is a nice discount if you'd like to take advantage of it, if you stuck around in this video and you wanna know how you can get a lower price. All right, so I have to be honest, this is one of those areas where it's just, you gotta pay to play. And I say that because I consider this tool a little expensive. Um, it is as expensive as FileMaker. Um, they do have a 14-day trial, which we can see here on the Geist Interactive uh, site. Geist Interactive has, as of the recording of this video, has merged with Proof, uh, Proof Group, and I believe it's Proof Geist now is what they have. Uh, we'll click on the more info, and yes, that's correct. Proof Geist, or Proof Plus Geist, I don't know exactly how you say that. I think they've got that in this uh, particular article. I don't know if Proof will be serve, uh, providing this data bit, this tool, or if Geist will continue to do that. But as we scroll all the way to the bottom of the page where pricing usually is found, here's where we come up with just a single user is $500. That's a lot. Um, and if your teams, medium teams, if you've got multiple people, of course, you're going to be able to use these. This is more or less an annual fee, in fact, as well. It's not a pay once, uh, it works for the one year. Then after that, you can see that the renewal is going to be a little less expensive. If you are doing FileMaker development and you're working on a solution where clients can subsidize this price, I highly suggest it. It is well worth it if that's the case. If you're just a single developer and if you know your own solutions or a lot of your own uh, development, then the tool isn't as necessary, but if you're working on anything where you have not developed it, this tool, in my opinion, pretty much almost becomes indispensable. Now, if you are looking for a discount, I have a 10% discount that you are able to access through this video. You will find it on the link on screen and it will be in the description below. That will get you 10% off of the current price. I don't know if it's changed as of the recording of this video, but hey, that's a nice way to get a good start on using this tool. So hopefully everything I've showed you in this video gets you interested, at least in taking a look at the trial and investigating your own database. Just taking a look at all the broken references, missing fields, um, unreferenced objects, that's all pretty helpful to take a look at. And just discovering what the tool can do is just a fun thing. Give yourself the time, sit down, and spend the time to investigate a database before you dive in, and this tool will pay dividends over and over again as you use it over and over to keep going back and discovering more about the databases that you're working with. So as always, I'd like to wish you much luck with your own FileMaker development, and until next time, happy FileMaking. We hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial, and we'd like to say thank you for your subscription and your support. If you're not already a subscriber, head on over to www.filemakermagazine.com slash subscribe for more information about the benefits of joining.